House of Bob is made possible in part by Calgary, Alberta's own Legend 7 Brewing and by support from listeners like you. To pledge your support, visit patreon.com slash houseofbobcast. Last time on House of Annihilation, the Yonti Necromancer Crate finds new clues to the location of the Black Opal Crown, Lee discovers a new source of strength, and Douglas finds his elemental powers are unable to overcome the pure evil of the Tomb of the Nine Gods. Hello, I'm Jake, and I'm playing as Crate, a doomsaying disciple of Dendar the Night Serpent. I'm Dan, I'll be playing Liani, Liana Servana, the Elf Beastmaster, with my little buddy Hamlet. My name's Alex, and I'll be playing the burly yet sensitive pirate, Hork Jones. I'm Christina, and I play Douglas, the now harrowed Ganassi wizard who is looking to save his family's legacy. And I'm Sean, your dungeon master. Thanks for joining us, and roll on! So you guys were in this long, wide hallway with a curtain of water separating the two ends of it. There's these carvings of animal-headed humanoids with a weapon in each hand. You trying to think of how do we get through this curtain of water without triggering this trap? So we'll swap our weapons with the weapons on the wall, take that different weapon, and then walk through. And, and that should work just fine, except it didn't. He did something wrong. You don't know what it is, but now there's this torrent of water, like a crashing wave slamming out into you. And I need everybody to start the night with a strength saving. Oh, 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 oh. Do I get? <laughs> <laughs> Do I get like a nope bonus because I can no. water? Nope. <laughs> I don't need bonuses. Oh my god. Horik attempts a strength saving throw, but he's got like a really sore shoulder, and he <laughs> only rolls an eleven. Not enough. <sighs> Douglas rolled a sixteen. Ooh. Fifteen for Lee. Ooh. <laughs> I told you this is aquatic shit. Ooh. What? <laughs> Why'd you go lower on crate? He rolled the highest. Ooh. Ooh. Should have been. Ooh. Whoa. Oh. An eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> and Christina's laptop is ruined again. Twice. <laughs> Just gonna have a pile of spare laptops for you. Yeah. As this water slams into you, Horik, you're going to take 12 bludgeoning damage as the wave crashes and knocks you prone. The rest of you take half damage. Horik is swept back to the back of the hallway. The rest of you manage to maintain your footing and hold your footing against the brunt of water, taking only half damage. Who is in the front? Lee. As you raise your head, looking up as the curtain begins to reconstitute itself, you see... On the other end of the hallway, a skeleton with a pentagon prism growing out of its head. Gimme. Looking at you. <laughs> like, this oh, <laughs> geez. This is awkward. And it grabs an axe what? off the wall. This is the most and sentient one. Throws it at the curtain. Oh, it's going to cause another torrent. Make a strength saving throw. Oh, I'm good. 23 this time. Pretty. Okay. Whoa, I did even better. 20 this time. Nice. Douglas, bringing out the strength. 26 for Horik. There you go. Just uh, 11. Okay. So this time, Crate will take full damage. The rest of you will take half. That is 14 damage, and Crate is swept back to the end of the hallway. Everybody roll initiative. Douglas got 17. 12 for Horik. 5 for Crate. 20 for Lee. I got knocked down. Hork, what's your dexterity bonus? Would you get, get up, up again? again? Mm-hmm. Maybe if I live until my turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hork's dex bonus is plus four. Okay. So we are going to start the round off, as we do most of them, with Lee at the top of initiative. Mm. Lee, you can see this wall of water is already beginning to reconstitute itself. It's becoming another curtain separating you from the skeleton. You still have that hand axe in hand. I don't understand the puzzle to it, though. You look behind you, you see Douglas clutching to a blowgun, you see Crate knocked down with a mace, you see Horik with no weapon at all, and you are holding a hand axe. You get a quick, out of the side eye, those animal creatures on the walls with those weapons hanging on the hooks. The stork-headed males had hand axes, the lizard-headed females had maces, the panther-headed males had blowguns, the female hawk-headed creatures were unarmed, the goat-headed males had sickles, and the frog-headed females had tridents. 
Do we need one of each? Or two of you guys are possessed by certain creatures, right? Yeah, your Koba's on, you got frog stuff, maybe so you should need the frog weapon. It? Hmm. That's my guess. There's nothing related to Great Azorbo, though, from is from the other room. <laughs> There's nothing right. related to Azorbo um, here. I run back and grab a trident. That's just one move action to grab a trident, and you could go through the curtain if you want to try and, it. Sorry, is the skeleton on the other side of the curtain? It is, this? yeah. So, like, through the... Okay. Yeah, you All were right. able to see it as the curtain dissipated. Gotcha. But it, now it's rebuilding itself really quickly, faster than you'd be able to jump through. Okay. I want to try going in... With the trident? No. Well, me first, as opposed to the trident. Like, okay. instead of leading with the trident, I have it, like, held behind me. Sure. As you rush forward, you hear, like, okay, oh, brace geez, yourselves, you're bracing guys. yourself. <laughs> Everybody behind you is bracing themselves, and you burst through the curtain. All right, and then I hurl the trident at the skull. Yeah, and there's the skeleton standing on the other side. You wind up, throw the trident, go ahead and make a dexterity attack. 20. That hits. Okay. The trident is a D6. Eight damage. You pierce the skeleton with the trident. It's now hobbling away from you. Douglas, it is your turn. You just saw Lee charge through the curtain with the trident. You can't see her anymore, but she's on the other side. Yeah. Blow dart in hand. Yeah. I jump through the waterfall. Everybody make a strength saving throw. What? <laughs> I got pushed to the. Uh, You're at the back. Outside. You're still getting hit with a wave, though. What was the one after the trident? Because uh, there's an order to this. I took the very first weapon. Yeah, well. Lee, make a strength saving throw. Wait, I got through. Yeah, you're still within this hallway, and the curtain you can see now is shoving this wall out in both directions. I feel like the guy should be dead by now. <laughs> we'll see. 23 for Horik. 20 for Lee. 12 for Douglas. 16 crate. 16 for crate. So everybody except Douglas will take half damage. It is 12 damage this time. The skeleton takes half damage. So Douglas, you're now swept back. You're now lying at the far end of the hallway with Horik and Crate. Lee, somehow, you managed to keep your footing as you and the skeleton are both barraged by the water. Mm -hmm. You can see it standing in front of you and its arm is dangling off. The ribs are missing from it. It looks like it's in pretty bad shape. Horik, it is your turn. You have no idea what's going on over there. None whatsoever. Hit the torrent again. <laughs> It'll wipe out the... I like just kind of turn to Horik when I get past you, I, and I'm I, like, try the second weapon. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that torrent is probably just going to keep hurting us and and not not help us a lot. Horik wants to try to go through the curtain with his own weapons in his hands. Okay. You're going to kill me before I get a turn. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just going to draw both his weapons okay. and try to walk through the curtain. It's going to be one move action for you to get up to the curtain. Second move action, you go through it. Okay. As he steps into the curtain, everybody makes a strength saving throw. As another wave of water crushes out. 12. 13 for Douglas. Oh, man. 12 and 13 both fail. Crate, what'd you get? 24. And Lee, what'd you get? Nine. So, Lee, you get washed to the far side uh. <laughs> with the skeleton. Douglas and Horik still prone. Horik gets washed back by Crate and Douglas. You failed. You take 20 points of damage. What oh, the shit. You're the worst. So that's all of us? Crate saved, I think. I hope so. Yeah, 24. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, you can now see that the skeleton is in pieces in front of you. Looks like it's dead. All right. Whatever. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real efficient use. Yeah. Of, uh... Douglas just gets up and walks out of this room. <laughs> all right. Lee, you can see that now that things have kind of calmed down a bit. I don't know if you call back to your friends that it's taken care of. But well, you can we're washed back now, so I'm with them. No, you're on the far side. You were washed away. Oh, There's the oh. curtain is central, oh, I see. Okay. and you got swept north while everybody else got swept south. I see. Okay. So you're up against the far north wall now. You can see that this side of the hallway is a mirror image of the previous room. Okay. So I go pick up the skull. Yeah. Pocket that, and then yeah. just walk back, pick up a trident on this side. Yeah. And then I walk through. And you walk through, and... Everybody sees Lee come through the curtain. You wait skull until in hand. <laughs> Stop trying to come through, you idiot. <laughs> you made it look so easy, though. She comes through, rippling muscle, you know, sleeves are all burst off, skull in one hand, trident in the other, goat fur coming off the side of her face, these little bumps on her forehead. Let's be honest, it smells a little bit, though, because goat. It's just a wet, wet. Wet, wet goat. <laughs> all right, and then I cast Healing Spirit. Then we can oh. all take turns walking oh, through. Oh, thank God. God. What does this give us? 10 D6s between all of us. Okay. Split up amongst you. Yeah. 
Who's the most hurt? Horik is down 45 hit points. <laughs> I'm down nice. 41. Yeah, I'm 19 of 64. I'm going to take two. I didn't think you guys would try every weapon to get through there. That was wonderful. <laughs> I wouldn't know. That was wonderful. <laughs> I just saw Lee go through and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Horik's going to take two of these as well. Okay. I go, everyone take two and then we'll see where we're at. I think we know who wants the other two. Yep. That's better. Yeah. Thank you. Got six off a of 3d6. <laughs> I do have a couple more healing spells. Yeah, if we're I'm desperate. still at ha- I'm not above half yet. Yeah, Horik so. is still down like 40 yeah, points. Yeah, I'm not even half right now. You guys are all on the south side of the curtain again, mm-hmm. but you know that on the north side, there's another crawlway just like there was on this side, and there's another hallway that goes north from where you were. Hmm. Did we want to investigate that? We know the way through now. I mean, we've got our four skulls. Yeah, I don't even care anymore. So I, Hork thinks we should just head straight down. All this extra exploring seems risky, and we've got what we need. For once, to I keep agree moving. with Hork. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. What does this skull look like, sorry? This one has a pentagon growing out of its head, a steel pentagon. How are you guys sitting after basically doing nothing? I've been today. betrayed by water. This isn't Betray- a good day. <laughs> <laughs> so you're at how many hit points? 28 of 64. And how are you doing for spell slots? Good, actually, because we had a long rest. I haven't really used much. So it's just health. Mm-hmm. Crate, how are you doing for hit points? Well, I start by casting false life on myself, which okay. gives me eight temporary hit points. Okay. I'm at 49 out of 72, but I do have a second wind, which I'm about to use. Okay. Uh, and then I have... Basically, 3d4 plus 3 healing I can pass around to you guys. How's Lee doing? Lee is down 32 hit points. Wowzers. So, you know what I just realized? We're fine. I forgot Orvex and Hamlet again. They Good. weren't in the room. I'm so nice. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. so nice to you guys. Man. It's not our fault you forgot them. Every time the wave came, <laughs> I threw <laughs> Hamlet up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> wave it's 100% around. my fault. I feel like a failure as a dungeon master for not killing off your NPCs. You already done it, man. Faster, I mean. Yeah, Orvex amazingly has survived. Yeah, he's, he'll, he'll he, just die in the next encounter that you remember. He's got blood armor. You, little do you guys know that he's Asrak. <laughs> <laughs> be Spoilers! And he's just leading us to where he needs to go. Oh no. Now I can't do that because I said it. Alex, how's Horik feeling? Horik is not doing super hot. He's at 53 hit points. Yeah. Out of his maximum 91. <laughs> Wowzers. Guys, so he's down 38. Okay. Boo hoo. He's got all his superiority dice. That's something. But he's seriously wounded. Oh my gosh, you're going to whine about it. Well, <laughs> he is. You have way four more hit points. <laughs> he has like double the hit points I have right now. Yeah. He's yeah, but Horik's also the Seven damage absorber of the party. How about over here, Craig? Thank you. This is my, uh, kind of my last and moan until I get spell. more healing. Horik is also going to cast second wind so he can get some extra hit points back. <laughs> <laughs> he's down so many. I'm the frontline fighter now, though. Uh... <laughs> I'm at I least mean, now at half. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. I can't disagree. Give me your second win. <laughs> okay. That's not something that happens. I think we might. <laughs> <don't> we? <laughs> <laughs> we have some healing potions from Fenthaza. Oh, yeah. No, we do. Yep. Yeah, Horak still has one healing potion. What does a healing potion heal? 2d4 plus 4. I rolled so bad on every healing thing. <laughs> <laughs> 11 on that one. Yeah, Hork got another 11 there. Putting them back into a comfortable place. 79. That feels comfy. Ready to take some hits. Feels good. Yep. Okay. 51 out of 64. That's not bad. There you go. We're only like lightly battered. We've got like hangnails and Mm -hmm. like and and, like bruised knees. (laughs) Oh, my knee is getting old. I like the idea that a hangnail is worth 13 hit points. (laughs) (laughs) And and some bruised knees. Yeah, my knees. So are we heading down? Yeah, let's go back to those wonderful gargoyle friends of ours. You guys head back out of this hallway past some purple spore mold. Are they looking at us? Oh, yeah. They're watching you the whole time. Just blinking at you. Well, (laughs) Throw the eye at them. No. (laughs) My eye. As you guys turn around the corner to head back out to the balcony and the stairs that lead down to the main level, you hear a familiar sound. Uh-oh. Oh. Masterpieces of Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, I think I called that a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> as you get to the balcony, you look down at the gargoyles where the sound is coming from is barking, and you see this little dog sitting on the head of one of the gargoyles. 
I'm like, Masterpiece, is that you? All right. <laughs> now, is he acting aggressive towards us or? Horik uh, pulls I mean, out an did. arrow yeah. and just like tosses it like a stick over to Masterpiece. It follows the stick, looking at it, barking at it. And, and you know it, he's never chased a stick in his and life, it's like right? It's, you know, <laughs> doing the tippy taps on top of the, the gargoyle oh, head as if it can't. What an can't. ugly dog. <laughs> <laughs> looking at the stick like it doesn't know, oh man, I can't jump. <laughs> you were asking if he was acting normal. Yeah, you could roll. Well, a, not normal, but aggressive. Towards aggressive us. towards you particularly. Yeah. Roll an insight check. Okay. He was always real barky at us. I'm going to yeah, make a but I mean, now well. that he's been alone, maybe he's more friendly to it since he knows us. I'm going to use animal handling, though. It would be that would be an insight. Bullshit, I'm using animal handling. Okay, <laughs> then you fail. Yeah. Is, it, is it still a wisdom? I can't remember. Douglas gets seven. Yeah, it's a wisdom. I guess you might as well roll animal handling since you have it. It does make sense. I haven't made you roll it since, like, the beginning of the campaign anyway. It says to intuit an animal's intentions. Oh, there you go. Yeah, do it. Oh, hell yeah. 24. Super into it. (laughs) Yeah. You are watching his movements, watching and listening to the sounds that he's making. And what's that, boy? Someone's trapped in the well. There is something off about the way that he's acting. It's almost like something more intelligent acting like a dog. Oh, (laughs) Kosef. All right. I knock an arrow. (laughs) (laughs) Masterpiece is phylactery. I mean, I always thought that that Kosef was just a ghoul that fucking this dog controls. You can can understand languages. Can you understand dog? I had to touch him. Understand dog. And, and cast a spell. Yeah. 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 Cast, cast that might spell. not be worth it. All right. Let's approach him cautiously. Orvex, do you speak dog? Do you guys <laughs> you guys go down to the base level looking yeah. up at the gargoyles? Yeah. Yeah. You head down there. You get down to the base of these gargoyles. The dog is still on top of the head, like just growling at you and snarling. You can see these four gargoyles all in their aggressive poses. There's the little slot on the front of the cylinder. Everything down here. Oh, man. There's the, the bones on the floor that you're crunching over. And as you get up right to the front of the dog, suddenly the (laughs) stops and it says, it's been a while, but now you'll pay for Kozef. And then begins to transform. These black wings burst like fireworks from the dog's back. It grows exponentially. And then before long, you are staring directly into the skeletal looking face of a black dragon. Roll initiative. 13 for Horik. 11 for Douglas. Great. Five. Oh, yes. Uh, (laughs) Lee. 17 for Lee. And Horik. 13. Lee, as the creature is transforming in front of you, you are the quickest to react. I take out my staff of striking. (laughs) Okay, you just draw the staff out? Yeah. Love it. Do you... Attack with it right now. The dra- right now <laughs> yeah. the dragon is about ten feet above you oh. on top of the statue. How long is the staff? Not that long. <laughs> Six feet at most. Yeah, can't really hit him, unfortunately. Okay, change of plans. Then I'll go with longbow. Okay, and I'm gonna step back because I want. Yeah, I want him to have to come down to us. Okay, and then I'll fire with my longbow. Twenty four to hit with my longbow. That hits. 10 damage with the first shot. Okay. And I'll fire again. Yeah. It's a crit fail. And just have Hamlet move over by me too. Who is going to be Orvex? Because we forgot to roll him in. We've got uh, Orvex player card there today, and I want somebody other than me to do it. Sure. There we go. go just roll his I don't think Crate should do it. He has ulterior motives. <laughs> <laughs> it's a conflict of interest. 20 for Orvex. Okay, so we'll, we'll have Orvex go next. Be brave, Orvex. Again, the dragon is 10 feet up on top of the gargoyle. Yeah. How large is a dragon? Uh, large. Okay. <laughs> uh, mechanically wise, it's large. It takes up a 10 foot square. Perfect. That's all but I need to know. this guy is probably like 25 feet long from nose to tail. <laughs> okay. But it's large. Yes. Okay. I mean, he can shoot his crossbow anyway from here. So okay. I feel like that's an Orvex thing to do. I'm rolling better for Orvex than I am for myself. <laughs> 18 to hit. 18 hits. Uh, for three piercing damage. Pew. Okay. So all these bolts and arrows start to pierce into Masterpiece's thick, scaly hide, and he roars, slaps his wings, and 
hops backwards onto the other gargoyle back into the left. He then breathes a line of acid. Picturing the dinosaur from Jurassic Park. Its frill oh. comes out and this black goo splatters out. For Horik and Crate, both dexterity saving throws. Now 20 for yeah. Horik. First one That's of the game. Boop, boop, boop. I assume dragon breath is magical. Or maybe not. I don't know. It's like supernatural or something like that. I wouldn't call it. It's not like a magical effect like a spell would be. Okay. Yeah. 16 either way. All right. So both of you will take half damage from this. Not me. Oh, you have something special. What is that? Shield evasion. So just hold up my shield and it all explodes around me in a gooey explosion. I thought I'm stepping away from you. <laughs> Could I borrow D8s? Mm, no. Because I like rolling them. I need one more. He says with a mitt full of dice. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. <sighs> so much acid. Here, you know what? Here's my unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so generous. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a couple eights. Oh, no. There's a 10, a 24, 34, 45, 50... <laughs> 59. Remember, it's only half this. Horik <laughs> oh, takes... only half. Horik, you take 29 points of acid damage oh. as you take almost the full brunt, just managing to just twist your body so that half of the spray splashes away from you. Man, Lee's gonna die so bad. And then with another flap of its wings, uh, Masterpiece moves back to the back statue. It is now Horik's turn. Horik is going to run up to Masterpiece. Okay. He feels like he's being pulled in two directions. He's both feeling risk averse. He's afraid of what's going on, but he's also a creature of habit. So he's got his battle axe and his mace and his hands, and he's ready for the old one, two, one, two. Okay. How are you getting up to the top of that pedestal? Are you going to climb up? Are you going to throw something? What are you going to do? Oh, because it's 10 feet up. The gargoyles are on a 10 foot tall pedestal. Yeah, he's going to climb like fucking King Kong. All right. You can also do yeah. like a lunging strike, can't you? Or? Yeah, I probably could. I don't know. I mean, climbing is probably fine too, but... Is there a disadvantage to me climbing? Can I make it all the way up the there main, this turn? The main thing is that the dragon is right now taking up that whole space on top of the plinth, like crushing on top of that gargoyle. Right. If you get in there, you're right in its zone. Well, I mean... Okay. feel like I'm going to be in its fucking zone anyway. I'll waive the climb check, but you have to roll an acrobatics in order to just like avoid legs and claws and arms as you're trying to get your attacks off. <sighs> okay. That's a modified 20. Whoa. Nice. Okay. You are in there. You're between his legs right now and you're about to slash up at his belly. Go ahead and do your attacks. Okay. So he's going to do the usual. He's going to do Bob the Battle Axe and then the Boar Mace and Bob the Battle Axe again. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> Is that a natural one? That's a natural one. That's a nine to hit. And that is a 15 to hit. That misses. And a 25 to hit. That hits with the okay. mace. Damn. Uh, no, that's the battle, that's axe, battle axe again. again. We're okay. all the way back to his third attack with this. And he's going to make this one a trip attack. All right. With a trip attack, when you hit with a weapon attack, you can expend one superiority die to add to the total damage roll. And if the target is large or smaller, it must make a strength saving throw with a DC 15. And on failure, you knock the target prone. All right. I'm going to try to knock this motherfucker right off of the statue. Okay. You uh, are trying I, to... Excuse me. I'd like my D8 back, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's this one. Thank you. How, what did you roll on that, by the way? On I think, this one. I think that one did okay for me. That it one was did okay. I checked. Ah, that's why I it's unlucky, so that's why it was good for him. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. 13 damage. Slashing. Nice. You come at the ankles. You're slashing down with Bob the Battle Axe, trying to hook the ankles and, and get him to fall off to the side. But being a quadruped... You know, it's got the tail for balance. It's got the wings. It manages to stay on its legs and does not fall prone. Horik is going to use action surge so he can take one additional oh. action on this turn. Fighters are going to fight. I know. That's right. right. <laughs> and he's going to attack with Bob the Battle Axe once more. 27 to hit. That hits. And he's going to try for the trip attack again. All right. 11 damage. Strength saving throw again. Yep. Natural. Two. 
<laughs> he fails. He fails. So he's going to fall. And, and you're sharing the space <laughs> with him. And he's on top of this gargoyle. So I'm going to roll a D8 and see which way he begins to teeter. Okay. I'm just going to go cardinal directions here. He falls back into the left away from Horik. Woo! You're <laughs> it, so lucky. And is prone on the ground behind the statue. It is now Douglas's turn. All right. The dragon falls back. You see him there now directly ahead of you. Mm-hmm. I want to know if dragons can be charmed at all. Oh, okay. Arcana. What's the deal with dragon? That's <laughs> <laughs> not charming. What is the deal? No, that's what she's rolling right now. 19. You know that dragons do have a very strong force of will, but they're not innately immune to such magic. Mm-hmm. Well, with that knowledge in hand, I am going to cast Suggestion. Okay. You have to roll a wisdom saving throw. Sure. 15 is the target. And what are you saying to him? Masterpiece, if that is your real name, do you not remember that I spared your life? And what's the command for the suggestion? Leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Basically. Okay. So you Sit. are working your magic. Your eyes are doing the hypnotic swirly thing like the snake in Jungle Book. Ka. And it is... Crate's turn. Oh no. We'll see. Crate's turn is easy. He's going to cast Bless. Yeah. He actually has four targets on this one, so the three, the oh. four PCs. What does this do? For the next minute, every attack roll and saving throw, you get a d4 on it. Oh, good. <laughs> and then he steps over there and gives Doug resistance, which is a, a d4 on your next saving throw. Okay, thank you. That's it. Okay. We are back up to the top. That's Lee. Oh, hell yeah. Lee seeing the dragon on the ground is like, my time to shine. Don't kill him just yet. Oh, maybe I, I saved us. <laughs> mm, we don't know yet. This is a dragon. Yeah, I don't. You don't know. I don't. So I'm going to beat it with a stick. Oh. <laughs> I drop my bow and I take up my staff of striking. I'm going to strike him. Lee rushes across the floor Hell yeah. right up to the prone dragon lying on its back, thrashing, about to roll over back onto its belly. And swings. Smashes his belly. Please miss. Please miss. <laughs> no, I'm not going to miss. <laughs> 33 to hit. Oh, yeah. Not even close. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that extra d4 helped. <laughs> that hits. And I'm going to use three charges on this bad boy. Whoa. So walk us through this. What does three charges look like? Every charge that I put on this, I can put up to three on my staff. Will give me one d6 force damage on top of the regular damage already. So do. you're getting an extra three d6 force. So I'm doing forty six damage plus nine. Not too shabby. No, not, not too bad. bad at all. No. <laughs> so sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Was that all of the charges? No. Nope. Okay. That was. This holds ten charges. So I'm gonna take another swing. Okay. Go ahead. With the same thing. Thirty. 30 hits. <laughs> uh, 28 damage on that one. 28? Yeah. Wow. And you use more charges on it? Did yep. you Did you I, max it out? Nope. How many does it have left? Four. I used three and three. Oh, wow. Beating the snot out of this yeah, dragon. Yeah, just boom, boom, boom. These waves of force blast out from the staff mm -hmm. as you whap Masterpiece in the side and then across the neck. He's trying to get to his feet, but it's Orvex's turn. <laughs> um, it's also Hamlet's turn. Oh, Hamlet, sorry. Yeah, Hamlet, get in there. And Hamlet scurries on over. Does a full charge in? Yep. Okay. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> he just crit. Nice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. 14 damage from Hamlet. Go Wowzers. Hammy, go Hammy. Go, go, go Hammy. You guys have had a couple good turns here. But now it is Orvex's turn. Let's see if he can keep it up. Well, Orvex has sneak attack. So he's going to take advantage of this prone target. 19 to hit on the first one. 19 on the short sword. Slash, it hits. 21 on the second one. Hits. You guys are now surrounding the dragon, just slashing into <laughs> it. Just beating the shit out of a downed dragon. Well, hopefully you didn't get charmed. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but you want to run away now. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> Convince him to leave us alone. Yeah. 12 damage on the first one, and five damage on the second. Very nice, you guys. Really well done. Just so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to die. <laughs> it is now Masterpiece's turn. Oh, no. <laughs> and with a... 
his wings retract, his tail spindles back into that little curly, ugly little pug tail. <laughs> his neck retracts back and his twisted teeth still bared and growling at you. It runs away towards the pit. Lee, you get an attack of opportunity. Oh, hell yeah. Um, <laughs> Just sure. I'm going to use my staff of striking and five more <laughs> yeah. characters on it. Do it. <laughs> I'm going to give it just to Lee because he's small now. Okay, right. Do I still get the d4? Yep. 17. Miss. Yeah. Oh, she's a little. The, the staff just glances against the ground. The little burst of force goes the wrong direction as Masterpiece runs towards the pit, jumps, and launches himself down into the bowels of the Tomb of Annihilation. You guys are out of initiative. Hmm. Bad doggy. Horek leans over the edge of the pit, holding on to the ledges as tight as he possibly can. Terrified, but also really curious about where Masterpiece has gone. The shaft in the floor is 10 feet wide and 15 feet deep. So just with the edge of your light, you can see where it opens up into another dark chamber beneath. Another 15 feet below that, you can see a floor. A total of 30 feet down? A total of 30 feet down. The shaft has totally smooth sides. You probably would need climbing gear or magical shoes in order to descend. But then there's a 15 foot drop below that. Hmm. What sort of magical shoes? Like sp- shoes of spider climbing or shoes of Spider-Man climbing. If only Bundley were here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Horik has the boots of elven kind, which give him silent walk. So I assume that makes him like light on his feet. Ah, uh, no. That doesn't help. Okay. It's for sneaking. What, what if we specifically, <laughs> I was specifically referring to how Crate keeps walking on all my walls. Yeah. yeah. What if we like lowered each other down? Like, um. But I'm not ready for that yet. Not ready? Yes. Okay. Got some more investigating to do? Yeah. Okay. I want to investigate now these four-armed gargoyles right. with the shapes that we have. You've got this skull, and you're looking at these pedestals, and this skull is definitely way bigger than the slots that are on these cylinders. Oh, so right, right on the cylinder, right about uh, chest height, there is a little slot, not even a quarter of an inch tall, inch wide, and you can see that it goes into the middle of the cylinder. Go ahead. There might be another skull down here then, right? We're on a fifth level. Yeah, but the skulls are too big. Yeah, I'm just saying if it doesn't correlate to this puzzle, then there might be another skull. Have we explored the corridor to the east? You have not. There's another corridor to your east that goes outwards. Four gargoyles around the pit. Each of them are on a 10-foot pedestal. Each of them have a slot. Each of the gargoyles have those rings of precious metal lining them around on the top of the pedestal. And when you were up top there with the dragon, you could see that it had a ring of silver around it. Is it the same precious metal on each? One is copper, one is silver, one is gold, one is platinum. Hmm. And we have not explored the hallway to the east. No. Let's go. It's, it's the only place on this floor we haven't gone. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. Man, see, it wasn't resetting. That dog was like <laughs> going through all those things much easier than us. Oh. I think we should check out these other hallways yeah. before we go down. Is Masterpiece just like a fucking evil dragon then? Probs. Yeah. I mean, we don't know he's evil, but we definitely don't think he's good. Most black dragons are evil. Are they not? Don't be stereotypical, man. <laughs> I said most. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Everybody just shook their head. <laughs> wow. Wow. What an assumption he made. Whatever. All I'm saying is that. <laughs> roll, roll an arcana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Am I right? <laughs> I think that's an 18. Uh, yeah, black dragons are evil. <laughs> okay. Wow. Hey. <laughs> Player's hey. handbook. <laughs> I got a 19. Yeah. How evil? Chaotic evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're bad news. That's an established fact. I didn't know they could turn into pugs, though. Maybe Kosev gave him some. I'm pretty sure that he was controlling Kosev. Dragon shape-shifting is not too uncommon, I don't think. I guess think. that's true. But why a pug? <laughs> Maybe because it knew we would recognize Masterpiece? It could be not him, maybe. But he did yeah. say something about Kosev. True. Yeah, he tried to get revenge yeah, on us for Kosev. that's true. One more question about the statues. Yeah. The precious metal tiles around them, are they built into the statue or they're just sitting on top? They're built into the statue okay. like a, you know, like you would lay a tile sure. into a concrete or something Sounds like that. Sounds good. So we can either go down this east hallway, which I'm for. I could also spider climb down the shaft a bit just to get a better look. Let's check out these hallways. Yeah. Hallways mm-hmm. it is. Hallways right. again. Always hallways. You guys begin to head south. Can you please give me your marching order? Well, Lee's first. <laughs> <laughs> Always now. Okay. Lee's first. Horrocks last. Horrocks last. Cradle goes second, oh, I guess. It's supposed to be in the, the middle. 
Mm, I'm Middle third. safe. D- Douglas is third. Douglas is third. Okay. Orvex and Hamlet are in there somewhere. Yeah, in yeah. the middle. Hamlet's with me. As Lee goes to exit this central chamber, you hear a creaking behind you as oh, man. all four gargoyles begin to shift and move and lunge off of their pedestals towards you. Roll initiative. 21 for Lee. 15 for Horik. Also 15 for Douglas. 12 for Crate, 8 for Orvex. At the end of the hallway ahead of you, Lee, you can see that there is a six foot tall green devil face carved into the end of the hallway, its mouth agape. Painted murals on the walls show faceless humanoid figures doubled over in pain, clutching at their heads and ears. To the right of that head is a hallway going off to the right. It is your turn. These gargoyles are jumping down off their pedestals after you. I'm going to take the hallway to the right. So you run around the hallway to the right? Sure. Okay, so you can see down the hallway to the right, goes 10 feet, and then stairs go up. You have another move action if you want to go? Sure, let's keep this going. We'll see if we can find a better place to fight. You get up to the top of the stairs and you see a door. It is a stone slab blocking the end of the corridor at the top of the stairs. Painted on the slab is the image of a gaunt male humanoid wearing a hooded cloak. Its face is a mask of stars. The figure's withered left hand is raised, palm extended. It is now Horik's turn. Well, Horik, being a creature of habit, mm-hmm. has to pull out his weapons and attack these gargoyles. That seems like a bad You're at the back, plan. right? Yep. So that first gargoyle is on the level with you. You can attack it. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, yikes. Bob the battle axe. That's a crit one. Okay. And then with the boar mace, a 22 to hit. And again with the battle axe, 24 to hit. Both of those last two hit. Perfect. He's going to swing with the boar mace first. He's going to make it a tripping attack. Total of 15 damage and has to make a strength saving throw if it is large or smaller. It passes. Okay. Second hit is also going to be a tripping attack. 14 damage. Nice. And the same save, DC 15. That one knocks it prone. Okay. This gargoyle with a crash of stone rubble slides and falls to the ground, growling at you with a, with a mute mouth as you turn to see the other ones coming down off their pedestals. Douglas, it's your turn. I'm going to back up as well and cast lore on myself. That's my turn. <laughs> I'm right. just going to run away. Sounds good. It is now Crate's turn. You see Horik engaging with this first gargoyle. Yeah. Lee has run around the far corner like a coward. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> a coward mortal. And Douglas has cast a defensive magic upon himself. And run away. And also run away. <laughs> Am I going to have to cast suggestion on Horik to run away now? <laughs> He's a creature of habit. You've never been in the habit of, well, I guess you've never mind. I was going to say you haven't been in the habit of getting yourself killed, but no. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true. I mean, we, we call it the Horik yeah. maneuver. He's got to do his maneuvers. Can I delay my turn? You can. The gargoyles go. Shit. First one stands up in front of Horik and will multi-attack. First, it comes to bite you with its stone jaws. That's a 23 to hit. That hits. 10 piercing damage. Yikes. It swipes at you with its first claw. 24 to hit. That also hits. 11 damage. Okay. Second claw is a 12. That does not hit. Ha ha. Ha ha. <laughs> Third claw. 21. Oh my God. Yeah, that hits. Are you still alive? For now. Eight damage. And the final fourth claw <laughs> swipes over top of your head and misses. The so final and fourthiest. Claw, 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 claw. That's brutal. I don't even want to ask how many hit points you have left. You can. You can ask. What do you got? 21. Awesome. Right. I love a total close. of 91. Getting close. Forever 21. <laughs> 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 Not for much longer. I hope no. so. <laughs> yeah, that's the dream. Ooh. Next gargoyle is going to go for Urbex. No. Oh, thank God. Plot armor. Hang There's in still, there. There's still two more gargoyles, bud. <laughs> the bite, 18 to hit. Oh, yeah. 10 damage. A claw, 21 to hit. 8 damage. Okay. Second claw. Natural 20. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'll just cross this. <laughs> 17 damage. Yeah, that'll do it. He drops. The gargoyle rushes up to Orvex, bites down onto his right shoulder, and then 
grabs each side of his body with a claw and just pulls back, <laughs> ripping Orvex into three pieces. Okay, he might actually be dead. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to put healing spirit on him. <laughs> see if we can get all those pieces back together. He's got two more claws. <sighs> Or Orvex splits into three pieces, blood Aww. splattering everywhere. Just an explosion around you. I'm glad I ran away, otherwise I'd just have Fuck. blood all over the me. The third gargoyle <laughs> beats its wings and swoops past Horik straight at Crate. Does Horik get an attack of opportunity? Oh, I guess he would. Yeah, you're right, because you're in that space. Go ahead and make an attack of opportunity. 13 to hit. With a desperate swing, your mace bounces <gasps> off of the gargoyle's stone hide. I hope this hallway was worth it. <laughs> so far, not. No, I know. <laughs> Crate, 26 to hit. Yep. 14 piercing damage Oof. from the bite. First claw, 14 to hit. Nope. Second claw, 21 to hit. Yeah. <laughs> Seven damage. Third claw, 23 to hit. Yeah. Nine damage. Last claw, 16 to hit. Nope. All right, so... A bite and claws bouncing off your armor, ripping into your flesh. Last gargoyle. Doesn't have very much else to go. Hmm. Yeah, he's Except blocked. for right at Horik. Oh, no. Closing in. Starts off, jaws wide, going straight for Horik's neck. 25. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it hits. 13 piercing damage from the bite. Oh, <sighs> Fuck. Latching onto you, it's going for the claws and the rend. 14 to hit. That misses. Oh, thank God. Oof. 26 to hit. <laughs> yeah, that hits. Nine <laughs> damage. Horrick drops. Horrick oh, my drops. God. Oh, shit. It hits you twice more. <laughs> oh, fuck. Because Rude. this thing, it's vicious. It has two more arms. It has two more arms. That means you take two death saving failures per hit so you are permanently dead we'll see you in two weeks if you enjoyed the show and want to support what we do number one way is to leave us a five-star review on itunes furthermore follow us on facebook twitter or instagram share our new episodes on social media visit the house of bob merch website on etsy for house of bob zines dice trays art prints and more and by joining the House of Bob Discord server to hear all the new episodes three days early. Artwork for this episode was by Sean Makes of Instagram.com slash Sean Makes. Audio production was provided by Astronomic Audio, the 100% Canadian-owned and operated podcast editing service that makes your big ideas sound even bigger. Music was produced by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. House of Annihilation is made possible by our Patreon supporters. And if you'd like to be part of making this podcast possible, visit patreon.com slash House of Bobcast. Last time. Oh, my God. <laughs>